I've been getting a lot of questions about the pulley assembly that I've used in some of my previous videos for hanging wire antennas from tree branches. I figured I'd film a quick video to show how to make one. I've had good luck with this, but know that I'm not an expert, so use this design at your own risk. The assembly is made with a single length of rope with key sections covered in vinyl tubing. It has a pulley at one end with a small slipknot loop on the other end that allows the pulley to slide through, forming a slipknot around the tree branch. There's a larger loop that I call the retrieval loop, which hangs down from a length of rope that can be used to pull the whole assembly out of the tree. What's special about this design is that it can be put high up in a tree with clever rope work and never having to do any climbing. I'll put links in the description below for my previous videos where I demonstrated putting the assembly up in a tree and taking it down. I'll also include links to the materials that I used for this build. Let's draw out our plan before we start building. On one side of the assembly, we have the pulley with our rope going through the eye of it. Then we will double back to the other side of the assembly where we have the slipknot loop. From there we drop down to the retrieval loop. The length of the double backed rope section that connects to the pulley needs to be sized to be larger than the diameter of the tree branch that it will go around. I'm using 39 inches, but you may need to go bigger or smaller depending on your situation. This will be put inside a 3 8 inch inner diameter vinyl tube. The slipknot loop at the back will have a circumference of 18.5 inches and will be put inside a quarter inch inner diameter vinyl tube. The retrieval loop at the bottom will have a circumference of 32 inches and will hang down from bare rope. I'm using a cheap stainless steel pulley with a plastic roller. I've had good luck with these so far, but feel free to go for something more high end. The rope that I'm using is 3 16 double braided polyester made by a company called Synthetic Textiles. For the slipknot and retrieval loops, I'm using vinyl tubing with an inner diameter of a quarter inch and an outer diameter of 3 8 inch. For the main body of the assembly with the double backed rope, I'm using a slightly larger vinyl tubing with an inner diameter of 3 8 inch and an outer diameter of half inch. Okay, let's cut our rope. I'm going to use the markings on my green mat to measure out about 192 inches. That's the length that I arrived at by adding up the individual component measurements that I previously mentioned. Just a reminder that you may need to adjust the sizing based on what the assembly will be wrapped around. Before cutting this, I'm going to tightly wrap the rope with some tape so the rope fibers are held tightly together. While the tape is still on there, I'm going to take my little butane torch and melt the ends to prevent it from fraying. I'll touch up the end a little bit because I want a very small lip of melted plastic that will help me pull the rope through the vinyl tubing. You'll see why this is necessary in a minute. Let's cut the larger 3 8 inch inner diameter tube to 39 inches. This will be a little snug for the double backed rope that will go inside. To get the rope in there, I'm using two lengths of small diameter string that I will suck into the tubing with my shop vac that I have set up here on the right. This is a cool trick that can be used for pulling string through electrical conduit as well. Okay, now we have two lengths of string going through the tube. I'm tying a slip knot in one of the white strings so I can attach it to the end of my black rope. A slip knot is important because it will bite into the rope even harder when pulled on. This is why I wanted to ensure that the end of the rope had a small lip on it to prevent the slip knot from sliding off. Now we can use that string to pull the rope into the tube. I tied off the end of the second string to prevent it from sliding out at the same time. Now that I have the rope going through the tube, I can slide on the pulley and attach the end of the rope to the remaining white string using the same style of slip knot to pull the rope back through the tubing. It helps to straighten out the tube so there's less friction when doing this. Okay, so now I have my pulley attached to my double backed rope that's going through the larger vinyl tube. From here the rest of the build is pretty simple. The rope can easily be slid into the quarter inch inner diameter tube for both the slip knot loop and the retrieval loop. I'm no knot expert, but a double overhand style knot seems to work pretty well. Basically tying a knot with two pieces of rope as if you're holding a single piece of rope. Then I'll throw a few extra knots on there for added security. I heard somewhere once, if you don't know how to tie a knot, tie a lot. <laughs> not bad. It's super important that the retrieval loop hang lower than the pulley. Because to access the retrieval loop, we attach a hook to the line that goes through the pulley. To grab the retrieval loop, we need to be able to raise the attached hook higher than the retrieval loop, which means the pulley needs to be higher than the loop to do this. The vinyl tubing seems to do a good job of weighing the rope down so that the retrieval loop doesn't blow around in the wind too much. The natural bend of the tubing also causes the loop to stay in a round and open shape. Alright, that looks pretty good. So I created a mock setup here. The main body of the assembly goes around the tree branch and into the slipknot loop. Then the pulley just hangs down below that. 
The vinyl tubing prevents the rope from biting into the tree branch and hopefully allows for expansion as the tree grows over time. I shortened the retrieval loop with some tape so everything would fit in the camera frame. That just hangs down below the pulley and pulling on it will reverse the assembly out of the tree. I can't speak to the longevity of this design yet since I've only been using it for about two years so far. Drop me a comment if you have any thoughts for improvement. Well that's about it. If you found this useful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Catch you on the next one.